Hey guys, and welcome back to Divine Journey 2. So there's not been too much time passed between episodes, but last time we made a lot of progress. Even though we didn't get a single quest, <laughs> we built this new setup for some more passive processes. And we were able to automate all the materials for solar ingots made in this liquid crafter. Which involved adding a passive distillery setup for bewitchment. Which seems to be going pretty strong here, we're up over 800 bottled hellfire. Oh, 1500 gypsum, that's awesome. <laughs> And we also concluded the episode by buffing up our production of treated wood and creosote oil, which seems to have fixed the creosote oil issues. One thing that we didn't fix though was our lack of sulfuric acid, and we noticed this about halfway through last episode. So the acid is made in this first liquid crafter, and it's basically a duplication recipe where we put in 500 millibuckets of sulfuric and we get one bucket back, with the cost of one crystallised sulfur cluster, which we have run out of. So this really isn't an issue for us right now, we have quite a big backlog of empowered solar dust, which is what the acid is used for, but let's not let it become an issue. <laughs> let's add some more crystallizers for sulfur. Alright, and just as easy as that, we have five crystallizers to give us silica, which we actually don't need, it's just a byproduct of the lapis. But more importantly, we get our crystallized sulfur, which unlike the methane, does not need to go through this transmitter. We need it in this cluster form. So yeah, we got room for five more if it's needed, but I suspect this will be sufficient for us. And it should all be sent to that liquid crafter over there. Oh, and it looks like we've got another very immediate issue we have to address here, which is something I didn't expect to run into, but apparently our tartaric gems have emptied, and we need this running as much as possible. <laughs> we need thousands of these reagents. And I think the issue with this automation is we've run out of well crystals. But it looks like only the regular demonic well crystals. The rest we're fine for. Although at this point in the pack, we have access to EMC, which means we can very easily fix it with our energy condenser. We can just enable this drawer and it should all fill into our ME system. We do have to remember to turn this off later on though. <laughs> we don't want full drives worth of this stuff. All right, so let's discuss what the goal is gonna be for today. For the last few episodes, we've been working towards these alchemical chests or the energy condensers rather. We are still missing four of these Mark IIs. We have two of the Mark Is currently. These will be used for the creative storage upgrade. And then somewhere down this, this little rabbit hole here, we get to the neutron collector. Yeah, there it is there. This is our still our first primary goal. But since we're still waiting on mostly blood magic resources for these chests, let's look ahead and tackle some of the other items that we're going to need for this neutron collector. And the first one is going to be antimatter clusters. So to get these clusters, we have to fill our neutronium compressor with 100 anti-hydrogen, which we do have all made, but they're definitely not a cheap resource. So for the neutron collector itself, we need four. Oh, I guess they're also used in infinity catalysts. That's a while off though, <laughs> let's not count that one. We need three for the essence of destruction, uh, one for each piece of clay, which is used several times in different creative items. And the rest it seems is used for these antimatter relays, which I don't think are gonna be strictly necessary. They are quests, which we'll pick up later on. But yeah, we just need four right now, which is 400 anti-hydrogen. To make 400 anti-hydrogen, we're short some dark matter, and also incendium. This is actually an issue. I suspect that this may become an issue since we set up bald hellfire last episode. The incendium I think is used in this recipe, but it's also used in some of the alchemy table crafts like Magicalis and Offensa. And those essences are used further down the line as well. So we definitely have to buffer production of incendium. So for the time being, we're gonna swap out this one which used to be for simple catalysts. We have five up the top here dedicated for simple catalysts. And instead we'll filter in the materials for incendium, but we do have to take care of the empty bucket here, which means adding another importer, configure the target side to the side of the machine, and we'll have to create a variable card for buckets, which we can import back into the ME system. And again, we'll make sure to store 63 pyrothium dust in here. Wow, you can see how fast that is with the uh, watch of flown time. Yeah, we store the pyrothium dust just to avoid the double stacking issue, since it's used twice in the recipe here. So yeah, the incendium is slowly going up now. And while we're waiting on some buffers filling up, I'm going to start pre-crafting some of the materials for the next energy condenser. And I think I'll also do a little bit of building around this base, try to clean up some of the new areas we've got. Oh, and I have also hooked up some EMC for infernal bulbs used in the incendium, which has actually run out, which I suspect is why our buffers are empty actually.
Alright, so it's now actually the next day for us. We have had a full night of this automation running and hopefully we've built up enough resources. I was just doing a little bit of building, trying to finish off some of the edges of this base. It still needs some work around here. But I was also going through the base just making sure all of the new automations that we've set up didn't break any old setups. And there is a few things that I noticed actually. And the first is that we are almost out of bewitchment hoofs here. These are used in the distillery for Traveller's Tenacity, which is used in Flying Ointment and also Demonic Elixirs. So we got this powered spawner to slay the sheep with the particular bewitchment dagger that we need to use. And this should slowly refill our buffer of hooves. The incendium is actually up nearly at 9000, which is amazing. <laughs> and in fact, I did go ahead and order the 400 anti-hydrogen that we need, which is almost done crass in here. And while I was building, I did also manage to get another alchemical chest which we can add to our collection. <laughs> yeah, we pretty much just have to keep ordering those things. We still need many, many more of these chests. In fact, can we get another one? No, we're missing something. Oh, the blood orbs. It's probably been used in the uh, anti-hydrogen craft. All right, we got the 400 anti-hydrogen. Let's make sure we order up the next alchemical chest. And I don't know if this neutronium compressor needs power or not. I think we may just have to... Oh, okay. Well, that's nice. <laughs> okay, there's two. Two more. Awesome. Four antimatter clusters. And our first quest of the day. Alright, so that is four of the items we need for this neutron collector. We also need six ranged collectors, which is super, super easy to make. Um, two oxygen collectors. Let's just encode this recipe. And can we request two of these things? We're missing two everfull urns. Which are made with these unending bowls, which is an easy fix now though, because we have these automated. <laughs> no more going to raid the Mortem dimension for these things. Or is it Skythern? I forget. So yeah, two oxygen compressors. Or wait a second, did I say compressors before? I meant collectors. Anyways, we can craft two more of those things. And so now let's start to lay out our craft and we'll be able to get an idea of exactly what we're missing here. We're missing quite a lot of white matter, but it's, it's quite easy to get with all the EMC we have available to us. So that leaves us effectively missing three items for this craft. Let's start with these energy collectors. And we need two Mark Threes for this. And the Mark 1 starts with, of course, a penultimate machine frame, as well as the Glowstone Singularity. I'm not sure if we have this one encoded. To upgrade to the Mark 2, it takes some Dysprosium ingots, along with some more Singularities. And then the Mark 3 is, I think, this, oh no, this is half nail at the bottom with a red matter. Let's see if we can get two of the Mark 1s. I think it's the Singularity at the bottom we're missing. Yeah, four Glowstone Singularities. So actually, in that case, for this craft, we're also missing ultimate ingots around the outside. Yeah, all of these around the outside are ultimate ingots. And to get these, we have to crush down the ultimate singularity, which is a combination of every single singularity, I think. So the techie we've made before, luckily, this was like 50 different singular singularities to encode. The magical, I think we also have. I think we're just left with this beginners and the powerful. And the beginners is the Minecraft one, which is all the base resources. And the tinkers... Yeah, this should be easy. We have seeds for all of this stuff. Powerful Singularity is Project Red, which again we have seeds for. The Alchemical one, I think we've already got encoded. And the Draglatic Singularity <laughs> is Solar, Titanium, and Draconium. Yeah, all of which we have seeds for. But either way, we've got another like 20 Singularities to encode. Oh yeah, there's the Glowstone one there. So I'm going to get on that and hopefully not wear my mouse out with all the clicking. <laughs> And I'm quite curious actually, how many of you guys actually enjoy the singularity process in modded Minecraft? I know that some people find it quite tedious, especially with all this recipe encoding and things. And it's like, oh, it's just can collect a bunch of the different resources and compress them down. I think it's done pretty well here actually, in the, in the fact that we only need a thousand items per singularity. But it does force you to build up inf infrastructure to make all of these items. So it's not like all of the mystical agriculture seeds become irrelevant. We do actually still need them here in the late game. To be fair, a lot of the stuff does have EMC, but there is a couple of items without. But yeah, I'm going to stop talking and doing this at the same time because that is guaranteed a mistake. <laughs> All right, guys, I think we did it. We have the ultimate singularity encoded. Wow. <laughs> so some of them I do have pre-crafted, like the Tinkers one, just to make sure this actually works. But yeah, hopefully no mistakes. Let's do this. And then once we have this, actually, there is one more step to make it. Oh yeah, there's the Singularity Singularity, but that's for after. <laughs> there is one more step to make it into the ultimate ingots, and that is just to pulverize this thing. So I guess we had a pulverizing recipe for this. This could go into our last recipe slot. And we have to wait on all these Singularities though. But in the meantime, let's maybe try to order our energy collectors again. Since we have these Singularities encoded, we can get two Mark 1s. We'll have to do them in sequence since there is quests for them. I definitely don't want to miss these quests. 
Alright, so both of these things are going to take a little while. Alright, I took a little break and it looks like both of the crafts have actually finished. Let's pick up our collectors for the quest. I wonder if there's any nice rewards for those actually. Two glowstone singularities, I mean that's that's quite nice to be fair. Let's try to upgrade them to two mark twos. Yeah, it's a simple upgrade process. And the ultimate singularity has also finished crafting. I don't think this is a quest though. Let's make them into our ingots for the craft. There we are, 64 ultimate ingots. We can also lay these out in our craft. Oh, looks like we missed one white matter there. And so once we get the Mark 3s, that just leaves the creative mill, which takes four more white matter, uh, four dragon egg mills. Let's encode this. We should have all the rest of the, these materials though. And um, we'll put in the recipe for the creative mill and also the creative dank null. But we are still a ways away from this thing. <laughs> so the dank null, um, of course we need two creative storage upgrades. I think the creative bookcases we've made. Yeah, we have two of these things. We're going to need two more though. We'll come back to the bookcases though. Let's first of all tackle the creative storage upgrades and the essence of enlargement. Starting with the storage upgrades, which is the thing that needs our energy condenser mark twos. So I'm not sure we'll be able to get this today actually. Um, it's, it's possible with the amount of resources we've got built up. But it's going to be a lot of crafting for these chests. But in any case, we do need more creative modifiers. Let's just encode the recipe for these. I'm not sure about these golden furies though. Oh, this is just a simple crafting recipe and we can EMC these fury fires. Ah yeah, we looked at these before and th this is the reason why it's so expensive. So all of these creative modifiers take protactinium, these ingots here. It takes 16 compound for every ingot. And we only get four of these things per piece of white matter. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a lot of EMC. <laughs> Let's actually just get that going at the moment. I may have stopped the white matter. Yeah, I did. Well, since we need so many of these condensers, let's not wait around. Let's just uh, casually request up another couple million bytes worth of ME crafting. Yeah, th almost three and a half million bytes. <laughs> Let's do it again. And the collector is almost finished. One more singularity to go. So while I was waiting on this craft a little bit, I uh, tried to encode the recipe for these dank nulls and I came across something I didn't think we'd run into again. <laughs> Remember these golden berries? Well, we have to make another couple of stacks of these things actually. Luckily, a lot of this stuff does have EMC, except for the enchanted berry golden molder folder. That's right, I've, I forgot about this thing. <laughs> Which means we need ice pendants and we have to get out the aether freezer again. And we're going back in time with this one as well. You remember these? <laughs> Getting our spinning wheel again. Yep, we need some more linen thread. I forgot this was in the recipe for this pendant. At least we have the watch for this freezer now. I remember waiting like so long on this thing the first time. <laughs> and ice stone has EMC, so that's also nice. Actually, you know what? I wonder if these folders can be repaired. Oh, they can be repaired. Oh, that's nice. I mean, I guess the repairer was far too expensive the first time when we first unlocked these. Alright, there's the enchanted golden apples. I'm going to make two stacks of these for later on. Yeah, I think it's 16 per dank null. Oh, and I guess this is the reason why I didn't upgrade to these before. I forgot these things take four black hole tanks each. In fact, no, that's just for one panel. Oh man. <laughs> Plus the emerald singularity, just for the panel. Yeah, we better start crafting these things. These are going to take a while as well. Anyways, the Mark II collectors have also finished. Let's finally upgrade to the Mark Threes. Assuming we actually can. Oh yeah which fills out the second to last item needed for this Neutron Collector. And that is also our next alchemical chest finished. These things have taken days to get, <laughs> but we should be able to craft our condenser. Yep, one more tier one energy condenser. Let's unpackage this. There we are, another energy condenser. I think this is our third. We have two down here in use. I wonder if we can actually upgrade one of these things. Yeah, you know what? We're going to leave one here for white matter. Let's pick up the... Oh, that might have been a mistake. <laughs> That's a lot of entities. Let's try to see if we can upgrade to the tier... Or the Mark II. We have this recipe encoded already. Okay, we're missing something. Some bone blocks. Oh yeah, V crystals. This is something I found yesterday, actually. And it looks like we've run into the last of them today. <laughs> so we're going to have to address that here and now. Yep, and a fishing controller. Let's get the fishing controller. Oh, are we still missing stuff for this? Dark oak wood planks. Uh-oh. Yep, this little original sawmill is going as fast as it possibly can. In fact, no, it's not. It's not even upgraded, but <laughs> we need more sawmills. So I think we'll make use of our new machine room and add two sawn factories. Actually, I think for these, we're going to have to space them out one block since we do also get sawdust. And I don't think there's like a void upgrade for the machine itself, like the thermal ones. So I think we'll just void upgrade drawer in between these two things. I'm hoping we can output to two different sides. Yeah, it looks like we can. All right. And um, we'll change this one to a trim in the middle. Oh, and I know there is EMC for this wood, but this way it just means that we don't have to worry about it. 
And we don't have to dedicate any sort of energy condensers to making wood for us. So yeah, that's one more issue taken care of. Now for the V-Crystals, which we also need for our Bewitchment setup over here. I did notice this was out earlier, and we have no more permutatio V-Crystals either, which is an issue. That means we're missing three different versions. So we do have the Wisp Spawner again running, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. Um, <laughs> maybe in the long term, but we need V-Crystals right now. So what we're going to do here is make use of the Thalmcraft Crucible and use Quartz Slivers to craft all of these that we need. Although I forgot which specific ones we need. Hold on. So it was Volatus Motus. Oh, we can't pin from the screen. We have to be in the terminal. <laughs> Volatus Motus. And I th I'm sure there was one more. Let's just start off with these and uh, we'll fill a chest up with quartz slivers for each. Quartz slivers in this pack are not the cheapest thing. It, it does take sunny quartz, but I mean, it's fully automated for us. So yeah, let's just do about half a chest's worth of each. But in the meantime, there is one more issue we have to address. I mean, I keep saying one more, but <laughs> there's always more that we have to address. But we are also out of Empowered Void Crystals. And the Empowered Void is also not something we want to put off, as it's used for these Void Reagents. Yeah, we, we must have run through all the backlog since adding the second Hellfire Forge. And we're still just running off the one setup that we have here originally. Yeah, here is our Empowered Void right here. So we may have to also look at our input items for this. But we're first of all going to add some more empowerers, and I think I want to keep them all in this room still, and we'll stack them on top of Mirian over here. Alright, so we got all the inputs set, I added two more empowerers for Empowered Void, and we have two more set up here just in case we need to add any more. The Empowered Glod was actually getting quite low, although it seems to have re refilled the buffer. Yeah, this hit zero a few days ago, um, and I suspect it's because of all, all of the Elevatium costs, which we were using for Crystalline Alloy, which is used in one of the Singularities somewhere, but I think that buffer is actually caught up, which means our Empowered Glod is going back up. But anyways, back to this Empowered Void, we're still missing some Dark Bimetal Gears for this display stand. I just ordered like a thousand manually right now and this is why it's awesome to have a wall of crafters like this because uh, yeah making these gears is a multiple stage process. We could just use crafters for it which we have somewhere else in the base. Yeah I think it's this crafter over here that makes our gears but let's just set up another one just to boost our production. All right so there's the infinity gear, add this to our drawers and then the dark steel gears. So flint for the empowered void isn't going to be an issue. We have this farmed with essences. The charcoal though I'm not sure about. I I really can't remember where we make this. <laughs> Our base is far too big. Where do we make charcoal? Has to be a furnace around here somewhere. Is it this one? No, this is bricks. I really, really can't find it. So <laughs> we're going to add another furnace for, for charcoal. All right, that's charcoal. And the fourth item we need, I think, is Invar gears, which again are made somewhere. But let's just add some more compactors for this. And in fact, we can probably repurpose some of these ones. Yeah, we'll give these the gear work and dies, and these can be for Invar instead. Alright, and we're making Empowered Void Crystals again. You know what, actually, two isn't going to be fast enough, let's just make all four of these for Empowered Void. There's no use leaving these empty when we have them built already. Yeah, there we go. And we're going to switch over this Thaumatorium to make our Motus Crystals now. And I noticed that we were also out of Bone Blocks, which I also cannot find anywhere in this- oh wait, there they are. Ah, the trick is to just hit record and you you find it instantly. Let's storage upgrade this. Okay, I've ordered up one more fishing controller for us, as well as another dank null. Let's also get some of our creative modifiers requested. I think we should have some white matter built up by now. Uh, 33. Okay, we got our next fishing controller. It, seemed, it may seem like these things are just so cheap and we're just like <laughs> creating them out of thin air, but no, this took forever to get these things. Okay, let's see if we can get our mark two chest one of four another two million bytes to do yep let's do it and i've also started this one of the packages anyway for the creative modifier to get the other half of this recipe though i think we need eight in total of these for now anyway we are still missing 720 protactinium which is a lot of white matter <laughs> so is there anything we can do i mean i guess we can watch this i'm assuming it works on the chest oh yeah and also, I hope we're going to have enough void metal. We were up over 2.3 million, I think, this morning, and we're at 1.9. So yeah, we're burning through this stuff, but um, it should be okay. Oh, and you know what? We actually need two more fishing controllers after this. Uh, <laughs> we need them for the Essence of Enlargement, which takes another fishing controller each for the stabilizer cores. And this is one of the components of the Creative Dank Null. Although while we're waiting on all this crafting, we do also have to get some more dungeon bookshelves. So we've been doing a lot of crafting and I think it's time for an adventure. <laughs> 
if I can remember which portal it is, I think it's that one. I hope it's that one. Yeah, this is not Vethia. Let's go. Oh, okay, that's a lot of mobs. <laughs> they must have wandered in here. Oh, look at them all. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> and we are after the libraries in here for all these bookshelves. There's no other way to get these, and we should have picked up more when we were here, but hey, we get to admire all the amazing Divine RPG textures, right? <laughs> okay, now to find our way back. In fact, we have teleports. Oh, that's right, we also need two corruption cores for this too, which is death cores. This is a lot of a lot more crafting as well. <laughs> mm, we're missing something. Mana diamonds. I mean, it will be fine if we split up this craft and the the blood orbs, that's right. And it seems we've also removed our production of refined obsidian dust. Another item with EMC, but it's very easy just to add a crusher for this. I noticed this because we were short on atomic alloy, which we were using for all the dank nulls. So yeah, that's a little strange. I'm not really sure how we were getting this dust before for this, but <laughs> yeah, it's fixed now. Alright, so it's been about an hour since we kicked off this craft. Well, maybe a little bit less than that, but we have our energy condenser Mark II. Remember, we need uh, another three of these Mark IIs, and just to request another two Mark Ones, look at this. So we have already crafted this once, we have to do this three more times, and it's just a casual nine million bytes. <laughs> and look at this. I had to look through this a little bit, but I mean, 4,000 Draconic Cores. Apparently we can craft the 4,000 though. I mean, yeah, it's like 15 of each singularity. <laughs> 200 chaotic cores and we have to do this another three times so yeah it's gonna be a couple of days before we can get all of these chests we can at least get our first energy condenser mark ii there it is this is definitely more exciting than the mark ones our first mark ii oh yeah <laughs> which i think allows for a bit easier automation actually in that we don't have to filter this i'm not sure if it's also faster than the mark one though Let's instead hook this up with integrated dynamics since it'll be much faster to import. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there's our white matter. <laughs> I'm curious to see what the burn rate on void metal is. Oh yeah, this is like a thousand every two seconds, like 500 per second. Yikes. <laughs> oh, and for all of that, the quest reward gives us 20 infused diamonds. <laughs> Very appropriate reward for that quest there, right there. Uh, so these creative modifiers, let's see if we can get at least four of them. We're missing only 20 protactinium, okay. Well, we have plenty of white matter at our disposal now. So there's our first four creative modifiers here. We need to unpackage all of these. Oh, I forgot about the unstackables. There's one. There's two. Three. And four creative modifiers. Yeah, so that does open up the quest for the creative storage upgrade. And it looks like it's also used in the creative reactor ports. I'm not sure how useful these things are, but we'll definitely need them for vending. We need four of these for vending. And the creative drum and the creative fluid tank. Oh, and the gas tank. It shouldn't be too long before we can get these, to be fair. But I think we need neutronium and things for this. Well, maybe not, actually. But yeah, let's see about this essence of enlargement. And we need four of these things total, but we'll, we'll start off with two, just for the quest. Another million and a half bytes. We're missing oak wood planks. <laughs> okay. Uh, some red matter, and I think that's about it. Oh, another fishing controller, of course. Let's grab two more of these. How many is that we've made this episode? Like, four? Something like that, but man, we're, we've spent so many resources today. Ah, oh, and it seems that we weren't making any bone meal anywhere either. I mean, we have plenty of bones, but just no bone meal for the bone blocks. I'm not sure how I didn't notice that before, as it's used in one of these reagents. Yeah, we must have just been creating this all on demand before. And around 10 minutes of crafting gives us our next two fishing controllers. And for double essence of enlargement, we are missing hardened iridium glass, huh? This must be for empty cores. Yeah, we we have to buff this a little bit. Oh, and also arboreal essence. Okay, I'll, I'll have to fix that with some EMC. It was a bit of a miscellaneous episode, so to say. The grind is real at this point in the pack. <laughs> but it has to be done. Um, we're getting ever closer to our goal of this dank null and the neutron collector, though. Yeah, looks like we're out of willow saplings specifically for arboreal essence. We can fix that though. <laughs> yep, that should get those two pyres going. We can at least request one of our corruption cores that we need. I forgot about this. <laughs> it's been so long between every clip in this episode that, uh, yeah, I kind of forget what I'm doing, but let's order one of these things. Or maybe not. <laughs> Something's being used up here. I'll figure it out anyway. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to do this for today. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all soon for some more Divine Journey 2.